Hi everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to look at some of the new features in Articulate Storyline 360 that's come out recently and I'm going to start with the dial interaction. So if I preview out the slide we can see how this works. We have a dial here and we rotate it around and I'm changing the colour of the circle. Now the dial is similar to the slider uh, but instead of dragging to the left or right or up and down you rotate like I just saw then and you can uh, show layers or change the state of an object and if we look at the design of the the dial you can see we've got a number variable we can set the rotation so you could make it 360 if you wanted to go all the way around in a circle start and end values and initial and, and step values and if I look at the trigger um, we have a new when of when the dial turns and then when that variable is equal to one or two or three depending on uh, how many steps you've got along the way. Now it's easy to insert a dial, you just go to the insert tab. Now there's been a little change here. Um, what used to be under controls have now been separated out and we have the dial and we can choose the style, I'll choose the other one here and add it to the slide. And just like the slider we go in and set up the parameters, you can play around with the formatting, how it looks, um, and uh, set up your 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 dial. Uh, one of the other things you can do with the dial uh, interaction is if I insert say another object, say I'll insert this uh, arrow, is that you can convert objects into dial interactions. So with this arrow selected, I can convert it to a dial. And when I preview this out, you'll see that my arrow here has now become a dial interaction. So that works with other types of images as well as shapes and things, so it's pretty neat. Now the next thing I wanted to look at is the new uh, characters that you can insert. Now when you go to the insert tab, the what used to be uh, illustrated and photographic has now been merged into one and as part of Articulate 360 we have access to a content library and uh, for our characters we have a whole new selection of photographic, Sumi is still there, and we have these new uh, illustrated style characters. The old illustrated uh, characters are still there but we have these more photo kind of realistic looking illustrated characters with expressions and poses and you can even sort down here on the left you can sort the, the characters out into uh, particular categories if you need to and I can go in and I can choose uh, an expression and a pose just like before and insert our character onto the slide. Now as part of the content library we can also insert uh, a slide template. There's a number of templates. Now there's a new tab being created called slides and where we can insert we've still got basic layouts and quizzing slides and results slides, question banks, but we now have uh, access to the content library and it has a huge selection of template slides and they are grouped into sets that uh, you can insert and keeps that consistency. So I can, I'll choose this first one here and insert it into the project. And once it's inserted, it can still be formatted out, added, add text, uh, change colors, change images. But you have that consistent kind of style. Um, a lot of that design work is, has been done, which uh, will save you some time. Uh, there's been some improvements to motion paths, so if I've got an object here, if I go to the animations tab, I've just put this little circular, this curved uh, cornered rectangle with a with a motion path. Um, you can now name your motion paths, which is handy. Um, but if I do a preview of this slide, you'll see that, um, as before, the object will move around the motion path and you, and you notice this rectangle always stays in the horizontal position. But now we have the op option in path options of orienting uh, the shape to the path, which when I do that and do a preview, you'll see that 
now the object will turn as it moves around the motion path which is really handy if you're creating games or creating some kind of a progress bar and you put an object on a motion path it will now follow the motion path and you won't have to worry about doing state changes and those kinds of things um, there's also been a few uh, little changes to the, to the quiz slides now for example here I've just inserted a, a true false quiz slide and you'll see that on our um, incorrect and correct feedback layers here we can actually go in and edit the feedback master for those feedback layers from here we can still get to it via the view tab like we did before with the feedback master but you can edit it from here and open up that feedback master or indeed if you do have a couple of um, master feedback masters set up you can choose them from this list which is really handy uh, there's also in the result slides change slightly a little bit too when you insert a result slide we now only get the option of um, that setting the pass score and which of the questions uh, we want to include as part of the result and what we have now is a uh, design tab under result tools where we can go in and add retry buttons and print buttons and 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 uh, set up timings and those kinds of things now there's been a few significant improvements with storyline in, in terms of making it more uh, mobile friendly um, one of those things is if I look at say slide properties that there's now the swipe uh, navigation uh, available for uh, each of your slides just like there is for the next and previous and you can turn them on and off but by default uh, they'll be turned on every time you insert a, a slide into a, into a course uh, in terms of the trigger uh, it's just there's been a slight addition that it, if you've got the swipe turned on that the user can um, go f to the next or previous via the button or when they swipe now if I preview this slide out um, and I can actually do that from these little icons up here in the right you'll see that this is the view for uh, if somebody's viewing the course on a PC but what we can also do is we can view the course uh, in different uh, as it would be seen on different devices so for example tablet landscape and a, a really big uh, change that's been brought in with with Storyline 360 is the player is now responsive and you can see on these different views how the player will uh, look so we have navigation we have where the menu and resources will go and I can see how it will look in both the portrait and the landscape for tablet and for mobile now for this particular course that I've set up you can see that the landscape uh, version is preferable over the portrait given that the portraits have these large black bands so what we can also do now is we can set up uh, a preferred way that the course should be viewed and that's in this little uh, playback option here that we might just say landscape only for tablets and phones and then OK and what that happens what, what that does is that it, it now generates this message to tell the user to turn their device if they happen to turn it into the portrait mode landscapes fine for both mobile and tablet but in portrait they'll, they'll see this rotate your device message which is um, a really cool new feature and the last thing I wanted to look at today was uh, a couple of changes to the publishing options so if I go to publish uh, one of them is that we can now publish to Articulate 360 which will allow you to use the review tool uh, and get feedback from uh, subject matter experts but we, all of the other publishing options are still available and for um, uh, LMS web there's the option of the uh, the format of the published files so whereas before we had the tick box for to enable the HTML5 version as well as the flash well now we can just select uh, HTML5 only or HTML5 will be displayed first then a flash if, if the HTML5 isn't working and, and the other combinations as well so you can set that 
for the particular course that you're doing. So if you, if you know it's only going to need HTML5, just choose the HTML5 version. And we can also publish part of a course. So we can still publish the entire project, but you can publish a single scene or just a single slide if you wanted to do some testing to see how it works. Well, that's the uh, that's a few of the, the new features in Articulate 360. Definitely well worth a look. Um, and um, the the big the big uh, changes, the big improvements have, have certainly been made around the responsive player and and making it much more mobile friendly. Well, that's it from me. Uh, I will see you next time.